When it comes to the state of Texas, this is a huge state and there's a lot to know. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you around the entire map of Texas. I'm going to explain the geography of different parts of Texas, tell you where the best places to live and visit are, explain some of the differences between all the cities, and point out the most important landmarks that you need to know about. I won't be able to tell you everything there is to know about the state because, like I said, Texas is enormous. But by the end of this, you're going to come away feeling like an expert on the entire state of Texas. So whether you're planning a move to Texas, are a local who wants to know a bit more about the state, or you're just curious, we're doing a deep dive today on the state of Texas. I'm gonna get started here in a second, but before I do, I want to introduce myself. My name is Corin, and I'm a realtor here in Dallas-Fort Worth. So if you're thinking of making a move to Texas, or you live here and you want to buy or sell real estate, please reach out to me day or night. I've helped people from all over the world move to Texas, and I love hearing from you guys and helping you with all of your real estate needs. So reach out, whether you're moving to my town of Dallas or somewhere else. I've got connections all over the state, and I'd love to help connect you with a great agent in the area that you're looking to move to. Now, let's get into this map. So what you need to know about Texas before we get if you don't know anything about Texas, sorry for those who want to know the nitty gritty, but let's get started with the basics. Texas is the second biggest state in the country in terms of land mass. It's only beat by Alaska, which is up here in the far north. Uh, as far as population goes, it's the second most populous state in the union as well. California currently beats it, although Texas has been gaining on it in recent years. So, you know, 10, 15 years from now, it very easily could be the most populated state in the country. It's also the second largest economy, if I believe if I'm correct on that, it only beat by California again. So you have California, then Texas, and I think New York. Could be California, New York, then Texas. I'll post on that, which one's correct. But basically a huge economy. It's been growing very rapidly as well. So like, you know, it's, I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes second or first either way really soon. And let's go ahead and talk about the neighbors. So as far as our state neighbors, we've got uh, New Mexico in the west side. Uh, and then you've got Oklahoma to the north, and then you've got Arkansas to the northeast, just like a sliver of it. And there's a little city called Texarkana, like right on the border. And it actually divides like right on the border. So if you go down here, it's Texarkana. So as you cross into Arkansas, you uh, drive through that city and half of it is in Texas and half of it's in Arkansas, which is kind of funny. So when you drive through the city, you'll actually see like yourself entering it and like the city's divided around. And I believe the state, like the city capital rather, uh, or City Hall is like on the dividing line. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and then on the east side, you've got Louisiana. So this is the states that surround us. And then to the south, we have Mexico. Texas has the largest border with Mexico. You can see a huge border here. So that's kind of something to kind of be aware of. And then we've also got the Gulf of Mexico, which is, you know, obviously huge as well. And that gives us a ton of ports and a lot of beaches. That's a huge advantage to Texas's economy is that we have, you know, this basically giant, you know, like all of this coastline, right? So a lot of people don't realize that Texas has coastline. They don't think of Texas as having beaches, but you'll actually see that Texas has some very beautiful beaches, to be honest. Um, and, you know, it has some not so beautiful beaches too, but we'll get into that. Um, so next up, before we go into like the, you know, grainy details on everything, I want to tell you guys about the climate. Most people think that Dallas is just like, or not Dallas, but Texas is just like a dust bowl, like state or whatever. It's just like dusty and, you know, there's like a lot of dirt roads. And when they think of that, they're really thinking about West Texas. So Texas is divided into two major climates. It's the arid desert climate on the West side, which is over here. And that's more of that New Mexico, Arizona kind of feel. And then on the East side, we have what's called a subtropical climate. So you can see this green line just dividing the state. And this, this is the whole east side of the state. So this is where most of the population lives is on the east side of the state. And this is a subtropical climate. So there's a lot of forests, there's a lot of water, there's a lot of lakes, um, you know, rivers. So this is like most people live here. Um, obviously like the west side, that's what you see in the movies. It's a dry arid climate. And the famous cities for that is Amarillo, Lubbock, Midland is a very big city. And then over here, down here is El Paso. So everyone thinks of El Paso if you've ever seen uh, Sicario, you know, the sequel when like they shoot across El Paso into Juarez, that's where that's based, you know. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, like on the west side, you got the dry, dry uh, arid climate and then the subtropical climate on the east side. If you're moving to Texas, you're most likely moving to this side. Although, you know, if you're in oil, you might move to Midland, you might move to El Paso, perhaps, uh, Lubbock and Amarillo, obviously, are like kind of the major like places that people move unless you're like, if you're not living on the east side. But this is where most likely if you're considering moving to Texas, you're moving here. And, and because of that, there's a thing that people call the Texas Triangle. 
And that's basically, if you go in here, we got this triangle that goes from Dallas, to San Antonio to Houston. So you'll hear this, that term a lot is the Texas Triangle. And that basically it has Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. It's like, you just draw a triangle between them. And that's like, I think it's like 70%. I'll post the exact number of like how many people in Texas live in the Texas Triangle, but it's like the majority of people live here. Uh, it's just like most places, you know, like Seattle, like the majority of people live on the Puget Sound, just like a tiny sliver in Washington state, right? Like, and then East, Eastern Washington is like very little populated. And same thing with like Oregon, like most states have that kind of going on. So Texas is no different. So now that we've talked about kind of the major stuff, I'm gonna go into the cities and I'm gonna start with uh, Houston. Basically what surprises a lot of people is Houston's like known as being the biggest city in Texas, but it's actually not the biggest metroplex, which is kind of surprising. So for a city, it is the biggest city. It has 2.2 million people in the city, which is pretty, you know, big. And Houston will feel like, you actually see it right there, it'll feel kind of like New York, which just dropped in the south. Um, but as far as it's like large uh, metro, it's only got 7 million people. So Dallas already beats Houston. Dallas is in the high 7 million, it's almost 8 million. But the city of Dallas is significantly smaller. The city of Dallas, which is up here, only has 1.2 million people in the city. So it's 7.8 million about in the metro. And then 1.2 in the city and then Houston's like the opposite it's two point it's like 2.2 million I think in the city and then like only 7 million like even in the metro but the things you need to know about Houston is you need to know that it's called the Houston Sugarland Woodlands or Houston Woodlands Sugarland uh, Metroplex and that's because Sugarland over here in the south southwest is like a big suburb of it and then the Woodlands in the north is a big suburb and Woodlands is like known for being quite wealthy so like most people you know like I guess you could say the wealth is going to be in the woodlands. Obviously, there's some like very wealthy neighborhoods right in Houston as well. But a lot of like the suburb you're going to hear about is woodlands and Sugarland. Uh, obviously, you've also got Katy in the west. This is kind of pom like famously known. It's kind of like the more rural area, but it's been like growing in recent years. So a lot of people are moving out to Katy, and like you might hear about Katy quite a bit. The next thing you're going to want to know about Houston is that obviously it's on the water. So you have like this area over on the water. A lot of this area is like industrial stuff. And there's like a lot of like ports here. Uh, you've got Galveston as far as like nice beaches. Is, there's Galveston here. This is like a really nice beach town. And they've got like a thing called, it's essentially called like a Coney Island. So I'll post a picture of that. Um, so if you like, you know, want to go to an amusement park right on the water, like the New York experience, Galveston is a great town for that. And then you've also got beaches like all along here that you can go to, including like if you keep going down, you got Corpus Christi over here, which is like another beach town. That's actually where Salino is from. So, but yeah, you got like nice beaches right here. Port Aransas is a really nice beach. Um, but yeah, so what Houston's known for, so I'll kind of talk about that. Houston's known for oil. That's like why Houston grew in the first place. It was like a big oil town. Obviously it has the, it has the bay, which is like important because that gets, you know, access to the ocean. So it was like really important for like the Texas military when they were fighting against Mexico and like when Texas was becoming a state. And obviously it's like a lot of trade happens because of this. And then there's a lot of gas and oil like that's been like, um, you know, drilled out in the ocean out in the Gulf here. Uh, but that's like why Houston grew in the first place is for the gas industry essentially, and the oil industry. And that's like what Houston is known for. Even, even today, it's like a lot of oil and gas industry is based out of Houston. But it's also got like a lot of uh, medical, like the, the, you know, like, a lot of surgeons and stuff like that, like really big ones are based out of Houston. So, um, but yeah, so it's like, think of Houston as the gas city, I guess like, and then we'll go to the next one. So like that's Houston. And then if we go over here, you got San Antonio and this is like the southernmost big city. And San Antonio is like a pretty small metro. It's at uh, basically 1.4 million people in the city. So it's got a big city, but the metro is only 2.6 million. So like the San Antonio metro is really small. Uh, San Antonio is like very family friendly area. It's very like, it's much more like that Texas, like or Tejano, like Mexican kind of feel for a town compared to like the other towns, I'd say. Like all of the other towns, San Antonio has that like very like Mexican feel to it. Um, it's got the Alamo obviously, which is like famously where, you know, the last stand was made at the Alamo and the, you know, war against Mexico. Um, for Texas's independence, and it's also got a San Antonio River Walk, which is like pretty famous. So I'll just actually type it real quick. See River Walk, so you can see it like that San Antonio River Walk, right here. You can see it right in the city, and that's like 
kind of the most famous thing that people do in San Antonio. If you want to go to downtown and you hang on the Riverwalk, you can get a hotel there. You know, it's kind of the big thing in San Antonio. Next up, we've got Austin, which is known, this is the capital of Texas. So for those of you who don't know, Austin is the capital of Texas. It's known as like the tech city of Texas. You, know, you could say hipster, it's very like young, it's like younger crowd. Uh, a lot of comedians are moving to Austin. Obviously, like a lot of people wouldn't have heard of Joe Rogan. So, you know, like, you know, Joe Rogan lives in Austin. He just started a comedy club there. Um, a lot of bars, uh, the, you know, University of Texas in Austin is based here. So, like, if I just map it real quick so you can see, University of Texas at Austin. So, this is the biggest University of Texas right here, right at Austin. So, this is the like flagship uh, university. So right there. But yeah, so that's like what Austin's known for is basically just tech. It's also very, like probably one of the most, ex I think it is the most expensive city to live in. So if you want to live in Austin, it's, you know, it's going to cost you. Like if you're moving from Seattle or or LA or anything, it's like Austin's the most expensive. Um, but it does have, you know, the perk of like, if you're in the tech industry, it's a great place to live. Uh, so Austin's uh, metro is only 2.2 million as well. And then the city only has 960,000. So this is like definitely the smallest kind of, Metro, essentially, at least in the Texas Triangle, it's the smallest metro. So Austin is in hill country, as is, is San Antonio, and especially like kind of goes as you go west, you get more into hill country. But like Austin is on a hill, so if you're from Seattle, if you've ever been there, Austin feels very similar to Seattle. Like it was just like take picked up and dropped in the middle of Texas. But if you go out here to the west, you get like really beautiful country, and there's just like a lot of great places to go. Like Fredericksburg is wine country which I made a video talking about that. So Fredericksburg is like famous for like wine. People from Austin go there. And then Dripping Springs has a really beautiful spring like that you can go to. All sorts of stuff out here to do. So it's just like, you know, a lot of really nice areas out here in Austin. And then now let's get to our last big city, which is Dallas, which is where I live, Dallas, Fort Worth. And Dallas is known as like, it's the business. I'd say like a lot of people, you know, like people in Austin say that Dallas is snooty. Dallas is very much like the business city of Texas though. So it's like the financial center of Texas. It's also got some tech. It's got like Texas Instruments is based out of Dallas. Um, but yeah, a lot of tech, a lot of uh, financial, like a lot of banking, like the banking industry of the West is based out of Dallas. So it's like a lot of money is basically in Dallas. Even like money from Houston comes to Dallas and money from Oklahoma City comes to Dallas. So it's like it's got, and then money from New York. So like New Yorkers, they like put the money out in Dallas. Uh, Started the banking hub for like the Western side of the United States is in Dallas. And that's kind of like how Dallas has developed over the years. Um, so for that reason, Dallas, you know, people from Dallas, like you'll see people wearing suits more often. You'll see like, you know, a lot more like financial minded, like, you know, just financial stuff going on. A lot of like really nice cars in the Dallas area, like a lot of like, you know, supercars, things like that. Um, so yeah, it's just like the money city, I guess you could say. Um, and then the other thing about Dallas is it's the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. So Fort Worth side on the west side is a little bit more like laid back. So if you want like, you know, the cowboy feel, that's where Fort Worth is. Like, you know, they actually do like cattle runs and stuff still there. It is still like a pretty decent sized city, um, but it's just like not nearly as like businessy and all that, you know, it's not like the financial center like Dallas is. So it's kind of an interesting dichotomy between the two. You know, if you like go from Dallas to Fort Worth, you'll definitely notice a different, a lot more people with cowboy hats and, uh, you know, boots on and stuff like that. So, um, but that's, basically the Texas Triangle explains. Uh, Dallas, like I said, has about 8 million people in the whole metro, but only 1.2 million live in Dallas itself. So it's like a huge metroplex. You can see how much it sprawls out and it's continuing to grow. Like it's continuing growing out this way, like Prosper is developing, Frisco's finishing, like finishing up a development right now. They got like a bunch of cool stuff going in on Frisco. They have the Universal Studios that's being built here. It's like for younger, audiences so it's not like the full grown Universal Studios. Kids under 12, it's like a really good thing to take them to. And then they also got the PGA Golf, like right here, I think PGA Golf just went in. So it's like, that's a big thing that's going in in Frisco. Um, you also got Six Flags here. There's two airports, DFW International Airport is actually the busiest airport in the world, I think it is busiest or second busiest, I'll put that up. And then you got Six Flags, uh, the Cowboys obviously in, in Dallas is something to know about. So like, this is where I live. I live like right up here. So right on like Louisville. You guys kind of get the idea of like the different cities. As far as like smaller cities now, I'll start. Oh, I guess like before I start with smaller cities, let's talk about El Paso actually. So El Paso is right here on the very Southwestern part of Texas, like way in the corner, right before we get into New Mexico. 
So El Paso is literally, it used to be, or I mean, it is like uh, Juarez and El Paso are like one city basically. So it's like right on the border. So like now there's like a wall here that goes like through El Paso, but like 20, I think it was 15, 20 years ago, there was no wall. Might have been reached more recently. And like crime in El Paso was pretty high. But now that they have the wall, from what I understand, like crime went down quite a bit. And you know, it's, it's not a bad place to live. Obviously it's like right there to Juarez if you're like going across the border. And yeah, that's basically El Paso. I don't know like a whole ton about El Paso to be honest, but it's got 700,000 residents and it's uh, 1.2 million metroplex. So it's kind of like a smaller population. Um, but we'll talk more about like stuff around there in a little bit. And then as far as smaller population centers, let's go ahead and start like up here. We're gonna talk about Amarillo. So Amarillo has got about two to 300 people in it, two, two to 300,000 people in it. And it's like cattle country. So like that's what it's kind of famous for. It's also famous for the big Texan steak ranch. And it's on, so I-40 is used to be Route 66. Have you ever heard like Route 66 or the songs about Route 66? That's what, you know, like this is where Route 66 goes through. I-40 basically is what Route 66 used to be. So if you ever want to do that road trip, like that's your road trip. You just basically hit uh, I-40 and drive along it and Amarillo is like one of the famous stops so like they've got you know all sorts of stuff like Cadillac Ranch and they've got uh the big Texan steak ranch which is like you can eat a 72 ounce steak it's like a challenge and stuff but uh so yeah that's Amarillo it's basically cattle country that's what it's known for I've heard it's a really great place for families to settle down in so if you're looking for like an inexpensive place to live Amarillo is not a bad town to check out uh, also in the north that's another town you're gonna want to know about it's called Wichita Falls um, Wichita Falls basically has a population of 100,000 people and it's known as a college town. So this is like, I think two hours north of Dallas, northwest of Dallas is Wichita Falls. Uh, it's got the Midwestern State University. So that's the college that is there, Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls. And like I said, it's like 100,000 people. So it is a pretty small town you can see right here, but this is like the biggest town in like Northeast Texas. This is gonna be Wichita Falls, like after Dallas, obviously. Um, and then next up, we've got Lubbock. So let's zoom out again so you can kind of get a feel for where we're at. So we've got Lubbock right here. And Lubbock is basically just like an hour and a half, I think, south of Amarillo. And Lubbock is known as like wine country. So a lot of, there's like a lot, actually surprisingly, like a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of vineyards in Texas and a lot of it is in the Lubbock area. It's so like all around here. So that's kind of like what Lubbock is famous for. Lubbock has a population of about 300,000 people. So if you're looking to move to Lubbock, it actually does have a pretty good sized town to here. Uh, it's got Texas Tech University. That's like, I can always search it cause I don't, Texas Tech University. So this is what's kind of known, you know, this area. So I'll, Zoom out again so you can kind of see. So, so that's like the big school in Lubbock that you want to know about, Texas Tech University. But uh, yeah, so it's known for wine. I guess that's basically all it's really known for. But so yeah, it's a small town. But you'll hear you'll hear people talk about Lubbock coming from Lubbock, and you'll hear about Amarillo a lot and Wichita Falls. Um, next up, a little bit further south, we got Midland. So when you think of like Midland's, what you think of when you think of oil towns. So this is like, this whole area is obviously like oil country, like there's a lot of oil like everywhere around here, but Midland is kind of the hub for oil. So like anyone who like works in the oil industry, they'll be driving, like you'll actually know people that live out here that will drive all the way out to Midland to work on the oil fields. So like they won't even live in Midland, they'll just drive back and they'll work there for like two weeks at a time and go back and forth. Uh, Midland's actually where George W. Bush grew up and there is a, his childhood home. So this is like the younger Bush, the younger Bush. His childhood home is in Midland. It's been like restored, but Midland's got, I think it's, I wanna say, let me see, it's 170,000 population. I will check the notes on that. But yeah, so that's, that's Midland oil country. So I think Lubbock's wine country, Midland's oil country, are like, you know, famous for oil rigs and everything. Amarillo's cattle country, Wichita Falls is a college town. And that's kind of what you need to know about here. Abilene's another town. That's kind of like, you'll hear about occasionally, um, but it's like kind of the beginning of like oil country as well. But yeah, Midland's the main one that you're gonna hear about. So, so there's Abilene, there's Midland. So, and Odessa, you know, you'll hear about like all these towns occasionally, but Midland's the big one. Uh, next up, we're gonna go back to the east over here and we're gonna go to Waco. So you'll hear about Waco. You've probably heard about the David Koresh incident. 
in Waco that's like the Branch Davidians when the FBI like raided it. There's like a whole, there's too many series about it recently that came out. That happened in the, I think early 90s, I wanna say like 91 or something like that, or 94, one of the two. Um, but yeah, they've made like the documentary, or like a you know, docu-pick uh, mini series about it. It's pretty good if you wanna check that out. But Waco is also known for having Baylor University and let me just go, and then it's also got Magnolia Market, so that's uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines. If you've ever watched that show, that's, they're based out of Waco, and they have this thing, this big thing called the Magnolia Market. So I'll post pictures of that up. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like, you know, Baylor University and the Magnolia Market's what it's famous for, and I believe Dr. Pepper was started in Waco as well. So if that's something that you find interesting, then, you know, that's kind of cool. It's just like a little thing. There is like a zoo here. Like I've, I've actually gone to that zoo. It's not bad. Um, but Waco is kind of like, it's like kind of drier than you'd expect. Like it looks like all green and everything, but Waco is actually kind of dry. <laughs> like it's just the way it looks. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad town. And then next up on, as far as like on the way down, we're going to look at College Station. So College Station is where Texas A&M A University is at. It's called Bryan, like Bryan College Station, because it's like the two towns. Uh, but this is actually a pretty like booming area right now. It's like been growing quite rapidly. It used to just be like the Texas a and University, but now it's got like all sorts of stuff going on. It's also got the George W. Bush uh, Museum and Library, which is like pretty famous. Um, there's also like some really good food here. There's a place called All the King's Men. It's a barbecue spot in College Station. So if you ever find yourself there, I definitely recommend checking that out and getting their uh, They've got candied, um, it's like, what is that called? Candied uh, pork, I'm trying to remember the word. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like the little pork things, but yeah, it's called candied something pork. Um, pork belly, there we go, candied pork belly. I don't know why my brain wasn't working. But yeah, College Station is really cool because it's situated right between Austin, Houston, and Dallas. So if you want like a small town, especially if you like, want to go to college, it's a great place to go to college. Um, and it's like right between the three towns. It's like a couple hour drive to these two and then a three hour drive to Dallas. Uh, so that's College Station. And then next up we've got, let's see, and over on the east we've got Tyler, Texas. This is like another small town in East Texas. Um, there's some like, I think they're building a chip factory here, like a big, what is it, you know, like the ones that they build in like Taiwan, I like what everyone was concerned about during the pandemic. They're building like a huge chip factory out here in Tyler. So that's like kind of good. It's been getting like quite a bit of attention, like new manufacturing plants and stuff like that. That's kind of what it's famous for, or like known for now. So what's interesting, you'll always hear people talk a lot of crap about Dallas for being like flat and like very boring to look at, which is like, you know, pretty true. Like that's one of the reasons Dallas has grown to be so big because it's so flat. You can, it's like where all the cotton used to be grown is like this just giant, like 200 mile radius around Dallas because it's so flat the way it is, it's like makes it great for building suburbs and that's why it's like grown and it will probably continue to expand outward because it's just a great place to build houses. If you go east from Dallas, you actually get a lot of forest. So you can see it gets like darker green over here. And like that's the case, like by the time you hit Tyler, like even like before, like over here, you'll start getting to like wooded, almost hilly areas. It's not like quite like hill country, but it is like really pretty out here. So if you, like Jefferson's like really pretty like there's some like really nice looking areas uh, all around here um, which I'll talk about some of that in a little bit and then you got Texarkana which I mentioned borders Arkansas and yeah that's basically that and then I think that's pretty much it for like uh, small towns let's see let's go over so Corpus Christi I mentioned it's like a smaller beach town uh, Port Aransas uh, Padre Island and then the other thing that you really want to know about is South Padre Island This is like right next to the border with Mexico, but this has the best beaches It's like a giant like land island right right here And it's got the best beaches in Texas So if you want especially if you like surfing, this is like the place to go Now there is like beaches all along the coast like they're all pretty nice Like you know, there's like quite a few nice ones, but South Padre Island is like known for having the best beaches in Texas just like kind of something to know about. If you ever want to take like a weekend trip down there, that's a great place to go. So that's kind of like explaining the cities. Um, I guess I'll real quick go over like some of the interstates you're gonna want to know about. So as far as like main ones going west east, you got I-10, which goes through Houston and San Antonio. Obviously you can see it like cutting up. I believe it goes through El Paso as well. Yeah, it goes through El Paso. So you just take I-10 all the way through El Paso, and like all along the Southern United States. 
And then you've got I-20, which is, where is it exact actually? Yeah, here it is, uh, it's in Dallas. Uh, so it goes, so I-20, it's actually kind of weird. So I-20 goes right through Southern Dallas, and like along this way, and I think it cuts up to, or it just ends, that's right. Okay, so just like ends going into El Paso. And then you got I-30, which also ends in Dallas. So I-30 is something you take to go like from the East Coast. You could take I-30 up. So you can see like it goes up through, so you take I-30 out of Dallas to or Arkansas. And then, yeah, does it just end there? Okay, <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's, these roads are confusing to me. But uh, I-40, I guess you just take I-30 to meet up with I-40. And then the last one, obviously we already talked about is, let's go, there it is, Amarillo. So we got I-40 goes through Amarillo. This is like what Route 66 used to be. So it goes through that and goes through Oklahoma City. Uh, but the biggest freeways going north south that you want to know about in texas is going to be i-35 is super big so i-35 goes down through san antonio and like goes all the way down to mexico so Nuevo Laredo. um but i-35 is basically what's good about like what you need to know about i-35 is that the texas triangle like basically is drawn along i-35 like this and i-10 and then i-45 like that that's like this is considered the texas triangle so i-35 to i-10 to i-45 and what's happening right now is like the population centers are growing on I-35, especially between Austin and San Antonio. This population like is just growing out and like in another 30 years, they expect like this entire area to be filled in with population. So like essentially this like this will just be like all populated. And then you'll also see it growing north toward Waco and like north, uh, south from Dallas. So there is like some resistance uh, in Dallas. People don't move into the south side of Dallas as much. Like Waxahachie's been developing quite a bit, so like that could be changing, obviously, like in Burleson. So like as these develop more, but like a lot of people in Dallas like moving north right now. That's kind of like it's just historical trends, unfortunately, that made it so that people wanted to move, like develop north. So yeah, like I was talking about, it just like has been developing north and then now it's starting to develop south. So like probably the last place like I-35 corridor will develop is like it'll develop here. And then it's gonna go up here and then like last thing it'll be like it'll probably end up developing like this way towards Waxahachie. So now that I've talked to you about some of the cities I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the, like the national parks and like just different landmarks that you're gonna to want to know about. Um, let's go ahead and start with like the national parks and there's only two there's only two national parks in Texas but there are a lot of like state parks and a lot of national forests and state forests and stuff but let's just get the national parks out of the way. So in El Paso if you go east from El Paso, you're gonna to get to the Guadalupe Mountains National Park, which is like actually mountains in Texas. So if you want mountains in Texas, this is where you're gonna go, or one of the places, and it also continues on into New Mexico. So this is out near El Paso. It's called the Guadalupe National Park, basically. Or Guadalupe Mountains National Park. Um, so that's one. And then the second one is called Big Bend National Park, and that's basically also, it's east of El Paso or west of Austin, or west of San Antonio and Austin. So it's like right on the uh, Mexico border. It's the Big Bend National Park, and this is also mountains. And you've got the Big, you got the Big Bend Ranch State Park out here as well. So this is just kind of like, if you want that New Mexico, kind of Arizona feel, that's like what you're gonna get here. Um, but yeah, that's, those are like the two national parks. Uh, as far as like, after that, we've got all sorts of state parks, so I'll just start kind of naming them off. Um, let's see if I can find them all. It's kind of like, let's see, where is this one? Okay, so the dinosaur, then you got the Dinosaur Valley State Park, which is out here somewhere. Let's see, I'm just gonna type it in. Dinosaur Valley State Park. Yeah, here it is. So the Dinosaur Valley State Park, the reason this one is like really cool, actually, if you live in the Dallas area, you can go here, Fort Worth, um, Real easily but they actually have like dinosaur like footprints like in the rocks so all the rocks have like giant dinosaur footprints and you can go like you know kids like to like, jump in them and you can get like a pretty cool picture and then they've also got like you know just stuff about dinosaurs you can kind of see the picture there it's just like you know kind of just anything you want to know about dinosaurs is here it's a really cool place to take if you've got family that love dinosaurs then definitely check out the dinosaur valley state park um, and then the next one that I want to mention out here on the east side is the Cato Lake State Park, which is over here, or Cato Lake State Park. So if you want to like stay at a, you know, go to a bayou and like try, like check that out, then that's where you want to go, the Cato Lake National Wildlife Refuge. 
And then you can go to the, you know, the state park and you can like go on this and you can actually get like boating tours that go along this bayou. So that's kind of cool as well. Um, other than that, we've got Longhorn Cavern State Park in Austin. So let's zoom out a little bit. So that's, let's see, I'm trying to find these things is kind of hard. So I'm just gonna like zoom in. So Longhorn Cave, there it is. So the Longhorn Cave State Park right there. So you can see it's in Northwest Austin. So like right outside of Austin. And this one's really cool. It's actually got some, I'll just post some pictures up here, but you can see what those look like. And like everyone that's gone there is like really impressed by that. So definitely check that out. And they've got a similar cave park like that in San Antonio. So if you're in San Antonio, you can check that out as well. But those are like definitely worth checking out. Um, just like underground caves basically. Um, now, if I go to West Texas, you got the Balmeray State Park. Let's go there. Balmeray State Park. Well, that zoomed really fast. Okay, so here we are. So this one, the reason that you wanna know about this is that it's got a 25 foot deep watering hole, basically. And here we are. So we're out in El Paso, kind of like San Antonio. It's like further west on I-10. So the Balmeray State Park has this like 25 foot deep, like spring water watering hole it's like super clear water and you can go diving in that you can go swimming in it it's just like a really cool thing to check out so if you go out there that's like definitely if you ever make a trip toward el paso or on your way into town or whatever definitely stop there another really cool place to check out right next to this is the mcdonald's the mcdonald observatory so if you like you know um just looking at the sky that's like a really cool thing to check out and then they've also got like mount livermore right here so it's like mountains really beautiful yeah, so that's kind of like the big things here. And then they've also got, let's see if I can find it. It's like the, uh, it's called the Monaghan Sandhill State Park. So, I think they're so hard to find here. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm just gonna like search it again. Monaghan's Sandhill State Park, here you go. So it's like sand dunes, there it is. It's like right there, I don't know why I can't find it. Um, yeah, so it's like also, so you see the Balmeray's right there, you just drive up this way and you can go to the sand dunes. So it's like really, that's like really cool. If you ever wanted to be in like, you know, kind of like Saudi Arabia, kind of gives you that feel. And people do like dune bugging out around there, I think like out, maybe not like at the park obviously, but you can get like, uh, like dune buggies, like four wheelers essentially. And you can go ride around out there, which is pretty cool. And then going back to hill country, out here like around Austin, you got the Pedernales. It's called the Pedernales Fall State Park. Yeah, there it is. So this one's in Austin as well. And this one has like some like basically limestone. It's got like super old limestone um, that's been like carved out by the river. And you can also like hang out. There's like a place to go swimming here and like hang out on the river. It's like really pretty. So I'll just post pictures up on all this obviously. So you guys can check it out. But the Pedernales Falls Pedernales Falls State Park. So go and check that out if you live near Austin or if you ever find yourself in hill country, that is definitely worth the visit. You know, there's hiking, swimming, stuff like that. And then further west, you've got, oh, I think it's, let's see if I can find it myself. Yeah, there it is, Buchanan. Inks Lake State Park. Okay, so yeah, out west you got the Inks Lake State Park and this is right next to the Buchanan Lake. So right here you got Inks Lake State Park. So this is like another thing to check out if you ever, you know, it's like right on the Colorado and then you can also go to the lake right next to it. Something to kind of check out. Like as you can see the Colorado goes all the way down there. And then what else? Um, I guess I mentioned it already too. I should probably let, you know, like <coughs> Austin, like Austin and San Antonio and like just this West area, like kind of Central Texas is known as Hill Country. And you'll like hear that a lot. And a lot of people will think that this is like the only beautiful part of Texas or whatever, but it's like obviously not true because East Texas out here has a ton of forests. So it's like really beautiful forests. And like you can start with a da the Davy Crockett National Forest. This is really, you know, like kind of a famous one. And then we also got the Angelina National Forest and the Sabine National Forest all like right here and the Sam Houston National Forest. So you can see like there's a ton of places if you like going hiking, hanging out in the woods, this is like your area right here. So it's not just hill country that's pretty, it's also like East Texas in general has some really nice spots to check out. So don't count out East Texas basically is all I'm saying. And as you go into Houston too, it's like you're gonna see a lot of wooded areas in Houston. Like that's why it's called the Woodlands. You know, it's like really pretty 
kind of like larger trees in like North Houston. So just keep that in mind. In San Antonio, this is actually really cool. So the Seminole, so it's called the Seminole, Seminole Park, right? Uh, State Park, Seminole Canyon. Okay, so we've got Seminole Canyon State Park right here. Here it is. So it's uh, west of Austin, if I remember, or west of San Antonio. I mean, Austin too. What's really cool about this, I'm posting pictures out on it, but you got the Amistad National Recreational Area, the Seminole Canyon State Park. It has cave paintings, like going back, like I think it's 8,000 years, I wanna say, or 4,000 to 6,000 years old. So you got cave paintings that are four to 6,000 years old out here, and I'll like post some pictures, and there's like actually quite a lot of them. I think it's like the most cave paintings in America, like are found in this area, basically, like between Mexico and Texas. And they've got a bunch of them on display for you. You can look at they're like quite clear. So that's kind of cool if like, you know, that, if that's your thing to check out, definitely like check that place out. And then the last couple things I want to mention about like as far as state park stuff goes um, and like just attractions is you should go to Amarillo. And there's actually two, you got the Palo Duro Canyon State Park, which is like just great hikes, great views, um, kind of like similar to the Grand Canyon. Like it was kind of, has that vibe, you know? So definitely check that out if you're in Amarillo. And if you go a little bit south from there, you can get to the Cap Rock Canyon State Park and there's like buffalo out here and also just like more great views and trails, like hiking and stuff like that. So if you're ever out in Amarillo area, definitely check out both of those state parks, you know, if you like state parks or just at least know about them. Like I said, there's a lot of really pretty places to go in Texas. It's just, it is a huge state. So you gotta drive for some of it. As far as like, I think it's like, you know, obviously I don't want to go like too deep into each city. Like obviously I could go a lot more deep and like in Dallas, I'll maybe make a video talking about just like the different neighborhoods or different cities and like different attractions that you can go to. But the other thing to know about Texas in general, I think it's like, there's like 10,000 lakes and pretty much all of them are man-made. Like one of the few natural lakes is the Caddo, uh, Caddo Lake, which technically wasn't even a lake. It's like a bayou and it's like been turning into a lake. But like all these lakes, like pretty much all these ones that you see, these are actually all man-made. So they're either made by damming something off or they were made by like, they used to have like brick quarries. So like they would dig out like the clay soil here and like make bricks. And then that created like a hole basically that they then, that became, then became a lake. So I think it's like, there's like 10,000 lakes or something in Texas that basically are like man-made. I think I'll post the exact, it might not be 10,000, so I'll post and I'll let you guys know. But uh, it's a lot. And uh, Dallas has a ton of them. Like, like I said, I live on like Lake Louisville. Right here, it's like one of the biggest lakes in Texas. It's really nice. It's like a pretty cool lake. Um, and you got like this one right here, Grapevine Lake. You know, you can see like Levon Lake, just all of these lakes. This one's not telling me the name, Lake Ray Harbor. Yeah, that's right. So that's like out near Rockwall. But as you can see, it's like, there's just a ton of them. So a lot of people don't really expect that. And like they actually, none of them were here originally. So also for like something that you'll notice about Texas, that's kind of funny, just like kind of to sign off on. It's like, there's a lot of funny town names. So you got like Gun Barrel City. It's actually, I have a friend that lives in Gun Barrel City. It's kind of funny, just that same that. And like just other towns like Tool, just like, you know, just like a lot of funny names. And then like they have like Italy, like there's a big, I'll post this like meme up about like taking your, life on like a, it's like basically the poor person's Texas or a European vacation in Texas, you know, it's like you can just drive around Texas and go to all the different uh, European cities because they have them all in Texas, but yeah, there's all sorts of just like interesting cities and something of missed opportunity that I found in Texas is in East Texas, we have a Texas, we have a town called West Texas. So I really wish that they would make a town in East Texas called, or in West Texas called East Texas, so then like, you know, that way in East Texas you have West Texas and in West Texas you have East Texas. I think that would be pretty funny, but they haven't done it yet. So I don't know, we'll have to, I don't know, buy a little spot and rename it to East Texas. I guess I could mention like Marfa is like a little town out here in the middle of nowhere. This is like a little art town. So if you like art, definitely check out Marfa. Kind of like known as like an artist town, you know, like Andy Warhol paintings and like just like different art displays. So if you're like into high fashion and art, like Marfa is a place to check out. That's like right next to the McDonald's observatory as well. So if you just like find yourself in that area, definitely, you know, it's, it's worth a stop, I'd say, you know. But yeah, I'm sure there's all sorts of things, like, like I said, more that you could learn about Texas. I guess like something else I should mention is McAllen. This is like the most famous border town that you'll hear about other than El Paso. It's like a lot of um, 
you know, immigration comes through McAllen, like, you know, whether it's like illegal immigration or whatever, they like tend to stop in McAllen and be dealt, you know, like kind of figure out what's happening with them essentially in McAllen. So it's like a ton of people going through there right now. You obviously see that in the news all the time. But yeah, up here in Dallas, you know, we don't really think too much about that. That's the border is very far away from us. Yeah, I'll just wrap it up with some stuff about like state neighbors, like what you can do. If you live in this, you know, like in East Texas, you can go out to New Orleans. It's not too far of a drive, especially from like Houston. It's real quick. New Orleans is like really pretty. You know, it's got Bourbon Street. It's got um, just like a lot of really nice French restaurants, stuff like that, if you want to check that out. And then north of Dallas, uh, you've got Oklahoma. So Texas is, you know, a lot of gamble in Texas. So it's like illegal here right now. But in Oklahoma, they like have the Chickasaw Nation and the Choctaw Nation. So they have casinos all along here. And you can go like, there's all sorts of casinos right on the border to Texas. So like people who like to gamble, just go across. And some one famous spot to go to is um, it's called Broken Bow. Let me find it. If I can spell Broken Bow, Oklahoma. So this is like a really famous place. There it is. Um, a little famous uh, spot to go to from Dallas, like two hour drive up to Broken Bow. But you can go to like Grant, Oklahoma is close. And then like up around here, I think it might be Durant. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not really like a gambler to be honest, but uh, yeah, if you like gambling, like casinos, they also have like shows, obviously it's not just gambling. So you can go there and like, there's always like concerts and stuff happening. And Broken Bow's also got like a river um, that you can go through, it's like right here. So like, this is like kind of famous, you know, like a lot of people like go river rafting there and like, you know, you can just do some like fun stuff. Um, so yeah, Broken Bow is kind of famous for that reason. It's like good, like kind of vacation area to go to. And yeah, there's Paris, Texas, like I was mentioning the uh, European trip. So you go to Paris and Italy and so on. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. I'm sure I didn't cover everything, but hopefully you guys know a little bit more about it. And if you guys like the video, make sure you like the video, like hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I'm gonna be making some stuff like more Dallas specific for those of you who want to know about Dallas. And uh, yeah, just uh, look out for more videos. I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope it was informative. Right, later.